Growing up, I was someone who really didn't care much for my hair. Like, it was in a ponytail most of the time, just wash it, condition it, I'm done. I barely even ever got it trimmed. And then as I started to get older, I kind of felt more of this desire to care for it. Luckily enough for me, my oldest sibling sent me a message one day saying, hey, check out this thing called the curly girl method. So I kind of dove in head first and really just started to learn as much as I could about uh, hair care, really. And uh, here we are. I realized as I was going through that, this whole process, that there are kind of questions that are a little bit more complicated than you might think they are. One of those big questions is, should I use a leave-in conditioner? Now, when I was younger, I would have just said, why? Why would I use a leave-in conditioner? I use a conditioner, why use a leave-in? Once I started caring for my hair, that changed. And I would have definitely told you 100%, everybody needs a leave-in conditioner. You can't have healthy hair without one. Now I have realized it's a little bit more complicated than that. So I want to dive into this question, talk about how to decide for yourself whether or not you need one. So hopefully this video will be helpful to you, whether you are new into the hair care world or whether you've been around for a while. That being said, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Lena and welcome to my bathroom. And if you do like content like this, please do like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. The first thing I want to tackle is what is a rinse out conditioner, what is a leave-in conditioner, and how do they differ? A rinse out conditioner is a conditioner that you buy that's meant to be used in the shower. You use it after your shampoo, you work it through your hair, leave it in for a couple minutes, and then rinse it out. These are mainly formulated to deliver moisture to your hair after you have kind of stripped some of that with a shampoo. And then they're also meant to help reduce the pH of your hair, which is going to help seal your cuticles, which tend to get lifted after you shampoo them. The difference between that and a leave-in conditioner is a leave-in conditioner tends to be a little bit on the lighter side. They kind of tend to be in a light to medium consistency, though there are some out there that are heavier that are meant for tighter textured hair. So be aware of that. Other things that leave-in conditioners will do, they do help to give your hair slip. Some some rinse out conditioners do give your hair slip, but a leave-in conditioner is meant to give your hair slip while you're out of the shower. Not only that, but it's going to help coat your strands to protect them and stop them from knotting and tangling throughout your week or however long you go between wash days. Other things that leave-in conditioners do is some of them will help to add shine to your hair and then they will also help to reduce frizz. There is kind of this debate as to whether or not you can use a rinse out conditioner as a leave-in conditioner. Most professionals don't really recommend it. There's a few reasons for that, one of which being that the whole idea of it sealing your cuticle, helping to reduce the pH in your hair, whatever causes those effects can actually cause your hair to get a little bit brittle if left on over a certain amount of time. Other things to keep in mind is because they are formulated to rinse out, if you don't rinse them out, the product can build up and kind of stop your hair from getting benefits from your other products. Um, also, that buildup that sits on your hair is more likely to attract things like dirt to it, so you may have to wash your hair more frequently. I personally just wouldn't recommend it, partially because a rinse out conditioner doesn't have the same benefits as a leave-in. It's not going to give you the benefits of helping your hair not tangle and not between your wash days. It's not gonna give you the shine. It's not gonna give you the protection. I talked about a lot of the things that a leave-in conditioner can do for you. They're meant to help moisturize your hair. They're meant to help with uh, shine a little bit. They're meant to help with detangling as well as keeping your hair detangled. And then they're also meant to help with frizz. So I wanna to touch on that frizz really quickly. There's a lot of types of frizz really. So at a very basic level, what is frizz? Frizz is when you have a strand of hair that is sticking out from the rest of the bunches. It's not sitting with the rest of your strands, whether that's straight or in a wave or in a curl or things like that. And like I said, there are a lot of types of frizz. So what are some of these types of frizz and will they benefit from that leave-in conditioner? Because leave-in conditioner is not gonna benefit all frizz equally. The first type of frizz is caused by dry hair or damaged hair. These are strands of hair that are sticking out because they need more moisture or because they have been damaged in some way. Maybe you feel your hair, it doesn't really feel super soft. It feels kind of just dry and hay-like. Maybe uses heat tools a lot. You straighten your hair, you blow dry your hair, you just use heat tools on it more frequently. Or maybe you've dyed your hair, you've done some sort of chemical treatment to it. Leave-in conditioners can really be good to help with some of that damage control. Or if you're someone like me and you went literal years without doing anything to care for your hair, literal decades really. Anyway, um, <laughs> if you're someone like me who's gone a long time without doing anything for your hair, it's going to help kind of boost the effects of whatever you're doing to help uh, reduce some of that damage and get you through the transition process faster, if that's what you're trying to do, to get healthy hair. Another type of frizz is regrowth. So regrowth is simply put, we all have a lot of hair on our head and we shed it pretty frequently. In fact, people shed 
100 to 150 strands every single day. That's pretty normal. And so your hair is going to regrow. And as it regrows, it says hello, and it makes itself known, especially up on top of your head in the form of frizz. If that's the kind of frizz you're struggling with, um, leave-in conditioner is not the right product for that. Now, another type of frizz is texture that's not meeting up to its potential. When I was younger, my hair fell into two categories when it came to frizz. The first was definitely dry and damaged. I mean, I was using the cheapest products you could find. I used the cheapest shampoo, which is super drying, and the cheapest conditioner, which just wasn't giving my hair enough moisture. So my hair was very dry. It was very damaged, especially because I was, I, I grew up in that time frame where we were just all straightening our hair all the time. So my hair was definitely very dry and brittle. That being said, that wasn't the only reason my hair was frizzy. The other reason was because I had texture that wasn't meeting its potential. If you're not sure if you fit into this category, tell me if this sounds familiar. Did you ever identify with Hermione Granger from Harry Potter? When other characters were describing her with this big frizzy poofy mess, or there's a lot of other media out there where you have a character that's talking about their big poofy frizzy hair that's just so unmanageable. That frizz is most likely texture that's not meeting its potential. Now, if you fall into this category, a leave-in conditioner is still a really good option because textured hair tends to need more moisture. It loses the moisture more easily, so putting it back in with a leave-in conditioner is a really good option. That being said, it's not going to be enough to tame that frizz. You're going to have to introduce other steps into your routine to help reduce that frizz. Things like not brushing your hair between wash days, things like using a mousse or a gel to help keep your hair smooth and in its shape, things like using a bonnet on your hair or something to help protect your hair at night when it sleeps because those are going to be a pretty big benefit to you, um, especially the other products. Things like gels are going to do a much better job at smoothing the frizz than a leave-in conditioner. Like I said, a leave-in conditioner could still be a really good option to introduce into your routine if you are struggling with that dryness, uh, but it's not going to fix it if your problem is textured hair that's not meeting its potential. This is kind of a subcategory of something that we've already talked about, which is damage. A subcategory of damage would be break. So the damage is the overall thing you're doing. You're putting heat on your hair and it's damaging your hair. Breakage is when that hair is so damaged that it actually snaps. Now there's a lot more that goes into it. What are some things that can cause this breakage? Uh, the first, like I said, is let's say you're going in with a hair straightener, straightening your hair and you've damaged it so much that it's just going to break. Another thing that can cause it is things like, uh, let's just say ponytails. A lot of ponytails are very damaging on the hair and if you pull it too tight, that can break your hair. Or things like if you have a purse and you're pulling that purse up over your shoulder and it's sitting on your hair, uh, that purse can cause breakage along whatever um, area of your hair it's sitting on. Another big reason though for breakage, and this was the one that I think I was probably the, uh, uh, the most guilty of, is using a hairbrush wrong. Yes, this is a thing. If you are going in with your hairbrush when your hair is dry and going up here, muscling your way through, you could be definitely, probably most likely causing damage. Think about that scene in Princess Diaries where, what is his name, Paolo? Uh, he goes in with a brush on Mia's hair, goes to brush it, and it actually breaks the brush. He started up here, didn't he? That's because he was doing it wrong for textured hair because Mia has textured hair. So again, there's another example of someone that maybe you identified with. What you're doing whenever you're muscling through it is you're actually ripping apart those knots and tangles and that's going to cause breakage and that breakage is going to cause things like frizz. It's going to cause things like split ends. The better way to do this is to start on the bottom and work the way up. Now, the reason I mention this is because if you really struggle to work through those knots and tangles, a leave-in conditioner does give you, like I said, earlier a certain amount of slip that's going to help remove those. Put in that leave-in conditioner, preferably when your hair is a little bit damp because it's going to work better that way. It's still work from the bottom up. That being said, it's not going to be the entire solution. So if you're reaching for a leave-in conditioner because your hair is really not entangled, you throw it in and you still choose the path of violence, you're still causing breakage, which is still going to cause frizz. Your better goal is to fit, kind of identify what is causing that breakage, what is causing that frizz, and um, target that first. And then a leave-in conditioner is a good tool in addition to that. Now that we've touched on kind of the side of things of if you have damaged hair or if you really just don't know a ton about how to take care of your hair should you use a leave-in conditioner, let's move on to people who have kind of been in this for a while. Your hair is actually pretty healthy. 
do you still need a leave-in conditioner? Uh, this actually depends on a few different things. If you are someone with straight hair and you really kind of want just a one-and-done product to throw in your hair, a leave-in conditioner is definitely a good option because it's going to help keep your hair from knotting and tangling. It's going to help kind of smooth it out, give it a little bit of moisture. If you have texture to your hair, however, this actually depends on a few different things. It depends on what other kind of products you're using as well as your hair type. If you have finer hair, lower density hair and lower porosity hair, you don't need a ton of products. When you fit into those categories, whether it's one or multiples, I would suggest only reaching for one moisturizing product. Whether that's a leave-in conditioner or something like a curl cream, it really depends on you and your needs and your goals. When I'm talking about goals, what I mean is, is your goal to have defined hair? If that is the case, I would reach for a curl foam or a curl cream over a leave-in conditioner. Most curl creams are going to deliver a certain amount of moisture to your hair. Uh, not only that, but there are a lot of products out there, things like foams, typically have a certain amount of ingredients in them that are gonna give your hair a little moisture. Some gels will also do this. And then another good option, if you're looking for a product, would be a custard. Custards are going to help deliver a little bit of moisture to your hair, as well as to help clump whatever waves or curls you might have. And then they're also going to help hold your style. So I am actually doing a video next week on um, curly custard battles. So stick around and subscribe if you wanna see that. The only time I would say you really need both is if you are someone who's been in this world for a while, you have relatively healthy hair, you really work to take care of it, but you still do things like diet or you still do things like heat style it every now and then. Um, a leave-in conditioner and a curl cream could help just kind of bring it back from things like dyeing. Because dyeing does do damage to your hair, you can still have healthy hair with it, but it tends to raise your porosity of your hair. And if you have higher porosity hair, you could probably benefit from both because it's just gonna suck up all of that moisture, especially if you have a higher density or a coarser hair type. But if you are low density fine hair and um, low porosity, you only need one. And then if you wanted to, you could use a gel and then maybe a mousse. But the two other ones should really only be focused on hold, not so much on moisture. Editing Lena here. One last thing I forgot to mention is that uh, there is one more reason that you might want to use a leave-in conditioner, even if you are using a curl cream. And that is if you're picking one that is pretty lightweight, something that's going to be a spray. So good examples would be the Not Your Mother's curl talk leave-in conditioning spray or the Hass curl care leave-in conditioning spray these are both very very lightweight they're not going to be too moisturizing they're going to give you just a little bit of moisture but the big benefit of these kind of products is a lot of them have things like heat protectants in them and those heat protectants are going to be just a really good addition to your routine i will be the first to say that i am really mostly knowledgeable about kind of the wavy curly side of things um, when it moves into kinky coily hair I don't particularly know a ton about it. So if you are someone who has really tight texture, I would recommend finding influencers with hair more like yours and seeing what they're doing with their products. However, I can say that typically as a general rule, the tighter your texture is, the more moisture you need. So if you're someone with wavy hair, you really do only need one product with moisture in it. And in fact, two products might be too much moisture for your hair. If you're more on the curly side, you might be able to get away with a little bit more moisture. It really depends on kind of those other things I talked about, things like your porosity and your density and your hair fineness versus coarseness. Um, that being said, once you move into the coily side of things, you may still need that extra moisture. Now, that being said, products for coily hair tend to be a little heavier on the moisture anyway, so you may still only need one product. But I just wanted to throw that in here and bring that up in case that's something that anybody's considered, is the tighter your texture, typically the more moisture it needs. So when it comes down to it, what I would recommend is if you have never used a leave-in conditioner before and you're new to this whole idea of caring for your hair, I would recommend trying one. If you have been in it for a while, you're caring for your hair and your hair is relatively healthy, try dropping the leave-in conditioner and only using a curl cream. If you actually do use a leave-in conditioner and a curl cream and a ton of products that leave moisture to your hair when your hair doesn't need it, it can actually lead to the opposite effect and it can actually cause some damage to your hair. This is something that I have actually struggled with for years and whenever I talk about my hair not behaving with me and I need to do some sort of protein treatment, it's typically because I've actually overdone the moisture in my hair. It can actually lead to my hair losing its texture because it has too much moisture, it doesn't have enough strength and it can't hold its 
frizz form. And that can actually cause a certain amount of frizz in and of itself. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you liked this video, give it a good old thumbs up. And if you do like content about healthy hair, definitely subscribe. Uh, it helps you out a ton. I do post a brand new video every single Friday. Like I said, next week I'll be coming out with another product battle. So stick around for that if that sounds interesting to you. And hopefully I will see you next time.